Hello and welcome back to this series on AP Computer Science Principles. I am Mr. Cunningham and today we're going to cover a couple of basic definitions. Now if you look above me, you will see two words, bit and byte. And I want you to think about whether or not you've heard those words in a computer science setting before. Now you probably have, maybe, we'll see, but we're going to start with their definitions. Computer science is a language and you're going to have to get used to lots of vocabulary. So those of you who are my students, you're going to want to write these definitions down and make sure you do your best to commit them to memory. So let's start with a bit. A bit is the smallest amount of information that a computer can process. It is a single binary choice. It is a unit of information represented by a one or a zero. Now, it doesn't just have to be one or zero. Those are just symbols. A light switch is a bit, assuming that it only has an on and an off, right? If it's only on and off and there's no in between, that's a bit. If, on the other hand, it has like a middle ground where it kind of dims and it doesn't quite turn all the way on or all the way off, that is not a bit. To put this a little bit more into perspective, a one is a bit. A zero is a bit. A zero and then a one is not a bit. That is two bits, right? There's one zero and one one. There are two, think of them like digits, right? In regular numbers, we have like digits. We have like the number 231 has three digits. This binary number has two bits, whereas these two each have one bit. I hope that makes sense. A bit is a one or a zero. You can't have both and you can't have neither. A byte is a sequence of eight bits. That's all a byte is. It's just eight bits lined up in a row. So like zero, zero, one, zero, one, one, zero, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, zero. That is a byte. A single bit doesn't really transmit a lot of information. Like I said, it's only one or zero, so it's often useful to have many of them together and we clump them into groups of eight called bytes. Now, before we move on to the next definitions, I wanna point something out right here that might just blow your mind. Every single piece of computer technology that you have ever interacted with, every picture you've shared, every text you've received, every movie you've watched on your phone or on your tablet or on your computer, every single one is made ultimately of bits. Every one of those videos, every one of those pictures comes down at its most base to a very, very long string of ones and zeros. We are going to learn in this class how we can use programming languages to turn ones and zeros into text or images or sounds or even movies. But of course, the more complicated the thing you're trying to make, the more ones and zeros it takes to represent it. Each computer then takes those strings of ones and zeros and translates them into something that we can see and hear and type. As new computer scientists, you're not likely to be working with binary for very long. We will learn about it in this class, but it's not something that is part of the day-to-day -day experience of being a programmer. However, it is very important that you know where all of your programs ultimately go. Every single piece of code that you write is ultimately going to be creating strings of ones and zeros that computers can translate. Now, when you hear the word bit or byte, it's often not alone. There's usually a prefix that comes with it. You'll hear about gigabytes or megabits per second or that sort of thing. So we're gonna talk a little bit about these prefixes up here and what they mean. Now, in metric, the prefix kilo means 1,000, which is the same thing as saying 10 to the third. In other words, if I say I have five kilobits, that's how that is, uh, is, is abbreviated, if I have five kilobits, that is 5,000 bits, okay? If I have five kilobytes, and you can tell the difference between bits and bytes by looking at the capitalization. Lowercase b means bit, capital B means byte. Remember, one byte is eight bits. So five kilobytes would be 5,000 thousand bytes 
which would be, if I can do the math correctly, 40,000 bits. Okay, the difference between a bit and a byte is a factor of eight. You just multiply by eight to get how many bits you have, or if you have the number of bits, you divide by eight to figure out how many bytes you've got. Now, mega, giga, and tera have their own metric definitions. Mega is million, which is 10 to the sixth. Giga is 10 to the ninth power. Tera is 10 to the 12th power. However, this is not how I remember these things, okay? This is not my method of remembering these words. I remember that one megabit is 1,000 kilobits, okay? Each one scales up by a factor of 1,000. There are 1,000 megabits in a gigabit. There are 1,000 gigabits in a terabit. Okay, so each one of these is a factor of times 1,000. From mega to giga is times 1,000. From giga to tera is times 1,000. So for example, if I had three gigabytes, I could also call that 3,000 megabytes. I hope that makes sense. It's all just multiplication and division. Okay, to finish up, I am giving you just a couple of very quick examples of conversion between bytes and bits, as well as using the different prefixes. We've got three problems up here. I'd like you to go ahead and pause the video, see if you can figure these out on your own, and then when you're ready, unpause the video and see if you got the answer right. Okay, so, Eight bytes equals how many bits? Well, we know that every one byte is eight bits. So if I have eight bytes, that will be eight times eight equals 64 bits. If I have 10,000 bytes, how many megabytes is that? Remember, this is megabytes because the B is capitalized. Well, if I have 10,000 bytes, and one megabyte is a thousand bytes, that means I have 10 megabytes. Finally, we have two megabytes equals how many bits? Well, we're gonna take a little bit of a detour here. We know that two megabytes is the same thing as 2,000 bytes. And since each byte is eight bits, we multiply by eight and we get 16,000 bits. So that's it for this video. Next video, we're gonna go ahead and jump into Khan Academy and do some example problems there. Thank you for watching and I'll see you next time.